Hi everyone, how are you? I, um, I don't know. I am thinking, and I'm thinking, you know, I'm looking at this, you know, took off my, my hat there, parked my broom, and I don't know, I looked at this true crime stories a while back. And, I don't know, there's all kinds of things here. Oxygen has made some documentaries, and, and this one. This one here, I don't know. Started looking into it, because being a mom for many, many years, I don't sleep at night. So used to my babies getting up and some of my babies were preemie. So, you know, up with that and complicated pregnancies, childbirth injury, all kinds of things. Kids getting sick. You just, you just, your mom clock just can't go to sleep even when your babies are grown because your babies, they're still your babies, you know? And so I couldn't sleep. So I started looking more into this case because this doesn't make sense to me. I don't understand how this one became that one. And this one may have went to that one. He did. But why? If everything was, as they say, picture perfect, right? What do I see in this picture? I don't know. I see two little girls that look really close in age. The one kind of looks like a boy. But it's wearing a dress, so... But if I were just to look straight at the face, if I were to look right here, I'd say, oh, what a cute little boy and a little girl. I don't know. And I look closer, and I see a mom. And I don't know, I don't have any pictures like that with me all wear the complete outfit and makeup and hair that you know I've been a mom for over three decades and I don't know that I have all three of those things done at any one given day to this point makeup hair and an outfit that matches but I don't know I just I was always really busy as a mom I guess and I see him and he's got his hands on the younger one and the older one is kind of touching him too and I don't see how a daddy that's that engaged with his children now lives without those children and what on earth could have made where he lives now be a better place than this because something happened to make this go to that and I don't know what it is. It wasn't that. That's easy. People are like, oh, yeah. He just wanted that, and there you go. And, you know, so he decided to get rid of that. To do that. No. No, come on. Come on. That's just too easy. That's, that's silly. Okay? 
So, I don't even think this, this, this is a factor. I think this, this, you know, I don't think it's a proven fact. You know, yes, he was with that woman. I don't feel that that woman had anything to do with the reason why he is there. And they are not here. But I could be wrong. I don't know. I don't know. One thing that happened was because I couldn't sleep, I started wanting to, you know, know more about this case as it may be. And there were a lot, a lot of videos. This one, like I say, I don't know how she did it, but man, she would have makeup, nails, hair, cute little outfit. She just had it going on. And a clean house, too. And she would make these videos saying that she was so successful and so happy. So amazingly happy that she loved him. And she loved the girls. And that they had all of their dreams all lined up. And she was a stay-at-home mom. God, if I had my life to live all over, I'd love to be a stay-at-home mom. I would have loved to not have the overwhelming burden and stress of always having to worry about how I was going to clothe and feed my children while keeping them in a safe neighborhood in a home that I could keep safe. Now, I probably cheated my oldest children because I had to work way too much. And for my youngest children, I was able to stay at home by definition a lot more but god I just can't tell you how fast they grow up and you don't want to miss a minute of it you don't you blink and it's gone it's all gone you have such a short time to be able to feed and love these babies before they're gone, before they fly out of the nest. And you just have to hope that you taught them enough and you loved them enough and you fed them well enough that they're healthy, happy, strong enough. You have to hope that you were able to do that while working because this world's expensive. But she, she stayed at home. She was a stay-at-home mom. I started watching these videos. I'm going, okay, I know how to yield to somebody more beautiful than me. You know, absolutely. I'm fat and ugly and that's why I'm not showing you me on this because I don't need people to comment that the overly obvious. I'll just save, I'll save my ugly fat ass for, uh, for the people who have to see it and you guys don't. And we'll just leave it at that. But, uh, her... And she loved putting herself on those videos. And I'd look and the house would be immaculate. And I'd be like, God, how do you do that? You know, even being a stay-at-home mom, because the times when I'm a stay-at-home mom, or even when I was working full-time, I was just as busy at home. You know, I had to make the kids food, clean, get their clothes ready, everything. And I was not a single mom. My children have amazing fathers. And because I'm going to get doxxed on this, I'm going to go ahead and say that I have 12 to 15 different fathers per child. Okay? Per child. Tons of baby daddies. Okay? I'm getting all this. You're writing this all down. So what I'm saying is I started watching these videos. Now, given the fact that I'm the only one who can't sleep. I can't have these videos on. 
Okay. I didn't have AirPods or anything like that. You know, I wasn't, wasn't ahead of the game with my insomnia, but I couldn't read because I couldn't keep a light on, but I wanted to watch. I started watching all these videos with her because this was all over the news. This was the biggest headline ever. Okay. So back when this was hot, this is, this is a magazine that's, you know, just about all these true crime cases, right? So back when this happened, you know, a few years ago, let's say, when this happened, let's say, gosh, we just, time is passing so fast. This happened in 2018. It's 2022. So for the past four years, I've been looking at this picture going, something ain't right. This is not picture pic perfect. It's not. What does this picture tell me? What do the videos tell me? I started watching the videos, and I'm like, for a stay-at-home mom, where are her kids? Where's the kids? Because if you ever took a video of me being a stay-at-home mom, wouldn't have makeup on, wouldn't have my hair done. If I had a nightgown on, great, because it might have just been the clothes I fell asleep in. And you know what? Well, I tried so hard to keep everything clean all at once and everything, there are still messes. And there's still food and there's still everything. And the kids are running around and the kids need something. And I didn't see her tending to the kids. I heard her say that she was tending to the kids, but I did not see her tending to the children. I heard her say how busy she was, but I did not see it. I heard her say how successful she was but I didn't see things adding up to what that success meant. And so I went into a rabbit hole. And I went deep into a rabbit hole. And I got myself some AirPods. And I got myself the sleep headband so I can listen to videos in my sleep. And I started researching. And I started going down the rabbit hole. And you know what? I wondered if this one should be wearing that outfit. And then I wondered, would this one never have worn that outfit because she had a bigger, deeper plan? Is the answer in her? Only two people know what exactly happened that night. Okay, those two, that one, and that one, and that one isn't here. And look, what is that? What is that in that outfit? Oh, those silly stickers. What do those silly stickers have to do with this? I don't know. So what I started doing is I started listening to creators and I don't play. I don't play all this drama. I know that this one's fighting with that one and that one docks that one and this and that. And I've been doxxed too many times to count. So if you want to join the list, just go ahead. Just know I'm so boring. I'm just a boring, ugly, old fat woman who's just talking too much. So just keep that in mind. And you know what the other thing I get called? I get called a witch all the time. So, you know. I might be, I may be a big, fat, old, ugly, boring witch, but you know what? I'm not somebody as stupid to believe that this adds up. Okay. So started talking to creators and I want to put it all together. I want to put all together what I've heard from other creators and I don't want to steal their ideas and their ideas might be wrong. My ideas might be wrong, but what if we put them all together and let that story gel and let's see who can disprove it and if somebody can come along and disprove this and that that fits together like a puzzle then take that piece of the puzzle out and tell me what's true because the story that i'm watching right now isn't true at all the other night i couldn't sleep probably like 500 lightning bolts per minute i don't know just tons of lightning right Three hours into it, and I look on the weather forecast to see how much longer the lightning is projected to be taken. And I look. And the news told me there were no lightning strikes detected in my area 
There hadn't been in hours. So why was I looking outside and seeing all the lightning when the news is telling me that there are no lightning strikes? Well, if I see lightning strikes and it says in the news that there are none, how am I supposed to look at this and read this headline and be okay that I see something different? I see something different than a stay-at-home mom, retired nurse, with a beautiful family, with a husband that decided to philander and decided that it'd be cheaper to get rid of his beautiful children that he was so clearly bonded to. And his beautiful doting wife who just loved him and screwed it up so bad because he put everything at his own workplace and was there on time and clean and everything and clocked in and went to work like the good worker be he is and then decided to take responsibility for it and live out his days in prison and if anybody questions it they are subjected to death threats and doxing and saying that they are speaking ill of the dead and everything else? Well, I don't know. The problem is, is that these two little girls, from what I saw, were not being treated right. Those two little girls were being treated like dog shit, okay? This smile here was never what this little girl saw. This little girl described seeing angry, scary eyes. And that little girl's hair, it didn't grow like that. It didn't grow in those little swirls like a boy cut. This one chose to punish this one with haircuts. This one's mom is a beautician. Okay? So, if this one was really, really good, she was going to get some barrettes as a reward, but only if she was really, really good and didn't suck her thumb. You see that hand there? Is that the hand that rocks the cradle? We gonna go there? No, I don't know. Do we go down that way? Do we go down that way? I don't know. Because it's what I feel. I don't feel that these two little girls saw this smile when they looked up at their mom. But when this mom looked outward, that was the look you got. Because why? because of this, everything mattered. This picture, this picture perfect family, this picture perfect family meant everything. And how far deep did that go? How far back did it go? Now, I'm not going to take credit for every idea that I have here. And I don't want to get other channel creators in trouble. But I don't want to take what they've figured out and what I've learned and sat and listened and contributed some. I don't want to take their credit. So when I tell you that this video I'm making is for entertainment purposes only, I am not an expert. I am not in any way affiliated with this case. I'm just a mom that can't sleep, that doesn't think this adds up. Okay? That's all I am. Now, the channel creators in which I have listened to include Lady Justice, Miss Mensa, her amazing guest star mama. I watched the channel creator Mia, and I have watched some of, what's her name? I think Lana, with an O. I'm sorry, I don't remember your last name, Lana. Oh, um, and the other one that I watch is... Um, it used to be called Black and White TV. And she narrated this really crappy book that was made by some weird old woman who decided to go and try and be a maternal figure for this one. And maybe he needed somebody to listen to him because at that time, the whole country, probably even me, thought that he was a monster and that he needed to be right there and that's where he belonged and that he was this narcissist who just decided that you know what my wife is out of town I'm gonna do this and when you guys come back you don't fit in my house anymore she does so I'm gonna get rid of you and here I go to her 
but then I ended up here. Okay. That's all I am. So please, um, give the credit where credit is due, um, for some of the the information I did not know and I did not source myself. But like I say, this is not factual. This is just stitching it all together. If all of the things that I have seen and all of the things I see in chat and all of the things that I see of people arguing back and forth together, if I put them all together and I stitch them together, I think that the closest thing that makes sense is where Miss Mensa and Star Mama are talking. Um, and they put some things really well together. But their channel is really about people of like minds coming together to think and we are honoring our right to freedom of speech and um that is actually in our constitution i am an american i'd like to just say that and freedom of speech is one of the things that people in my in my family and people very close to me have um defended so that i may have that at this moment in time and when people want to get in these comments later, which they will, and they will try to take down this video and they'll try to dox my email and whatnot. Just remember, I have freedom of speech. I'm, speech. I'm speaking about something that doesn't make sense to me. I'm speaking because I believe that I live in a country that protects the innocent. Do I believe that this man right here is completely innocent? I don't know. I don't know. What I do know is that in our United States judicial system, we do have a series of pleas that include guilty and not guilty. And there are guilty pleas that include doing something in the moment that you may not have done in your right mind. He was maybe wearing one of those happy stickers because he'd been such a good boy. And so she might have put two on him. What if those stickers made this one act like that one and he landed there? Is he still guilty? What was in that sticker could have made that man act like that man to get here. Okay? What if this one, what if this one puts so much pressure on that one that he became a battered husband, a battered spouse, and he snapped, and he did things like that that ended in here. I don't know. He said this one took the lives of those two and he took her life first. Did that happen? I don't know. If he did that, does that make him guilty of only her murder? And then she's responsible for these two. The other theory is that she took the lives of these two and herself. And this one went to work. And something happened. And we don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But I would like to believe that if there is an innocent person in prison, by any acceptable plea that we see as an acceptable defensive plea in our United States Judicial Court, I would like to believe that I live in a country where that is true and that is the standard. Because I don't believe that this one, who's looking down, not paying attention here, defended him at all because he didn't have to. Because this one said he would take responsibility for it. He would take responsibility for what? What would he take responsibility for? It looks to me right here like he's taking an awful lot of responsibility. It looks to me like he's taking responsibility of taking care of those two little girls. But she was a stay-at-home mom, so why would he have needed to take care of it? Because he was gone all the time, and he was working, and he was tired, and he was all those things. And the answer was to put a sticker on him? 
And the sticker made him feel so much better that he could still take care of those girls, get them to school in the morning, pick them up after he was done doing his work all day, 7.30 to 5.30, go to the gym, wash all of their clothes, not put them in the dryer, bring them sandwiches at night because they were still hungry. Because this one is a stay-at-home mom. Her theory was, her theory of parenting was, children to bed, 6.30 p.m. to 6.30 a.m. With a two to three hour nap in between that, and in order for them to go to sleep, gotta give them Benadryl and lots of Tylenol. Okay? Now, these girls slept in bedrooms with locked doors. 6.30 to 6 a.m., 6.30 to 6.30, and they'd line up like little birds, just like Bella's all mouth is, to take that Benadryl and lots of Tylenol every night. And every night they were getting their temperatures taken rectally because she said that she felt that these girls probably had Mediterranean, familial Mediterranean fever. Now, this one also came, this one also said she has lupus. Okay. Now, I saw an awful lot of pictures of her, like, out in the sun, saying how wonderful those vacations were and everything. And she's out in the sun, having fun, and going to all these places that that sticker shop sent her. But lupus and the sun don't mix. And I don't know, but a lot of lupus people can't put their makeup on, have their nails looking like that, their hair done in an outfit. And go on all these vacations. Because lupus is a very, very sad, progressive illness that takes the very life out of you slowly. Oddly enough, in her autopsy, she was reportedly very healthy. She had one gallstone. And lupus is not noted. I have seen in the chats where people will say, oh, no, she had lupus because I saw that she wore the bracelet and she spoke out about lupus a lot. She didn't have lupus. This is admitted. This is admitted by the family members who have said that she did not have lupus. She had health care issues, air quotation, which may be something much different than something as acceptable to polite conversation as lupus or migraines. Okay? So, that's the groundwork here. Just putting it all together. What do you think? What do you see? What do you see here? Okay? Now, If these little girls were not being treated right, like I don't think that they were. I've seen things that make me very upset because I did not have the audio. I saw what I saw. I saw two very scared little girls. I two, saw two little girls that were terrified of their own mother. So scared of their own mom that they wanted their dad, but oh, the dad was in the bathroom. Daddy was dressed up as Santa, and they're kind of old enough to know that Dan daddy was under that Santa thing, but... Mommy was really upset about something in that Santa video, and those girls were scared. How many stay-at-home moms would put your makeup on, do your hair, have yourself dressed up all for Christmas, hell-bent on making a Christmas video for your children, and ignore the fact that your children are crying and screaming to the effect that they're about to have a freaking panic attack. And instead, snippetly, like a teenager, like a bad teenage babysitter, call them a Grinch. How many of you stay at moms or stay at home moms would do that? None. None. 
And see, he was wearing a Santa suit. So he didn't have time to come and take care of the girls because in this picture-perfect world, although she says she does everything, I think he did everything. And before you go getting all gross and everything and saying that, oh, I'm a, I must be lusting for him. Nah, he's not my type. I, you know, nah, no, I, I won't even interject right there. I mean, I like my men, you know, seven to eight foot tall. Um, you know. 500 or so pounds. Um, definitely not, not like that. And, you know, his age, let me see here if I go in here. Oh. Yeah, he could be my son. So, no, no, I'm not lusting. I'm not seeing it like that. I'm seeing it like this. I was in her shoes. But I didn't wear wedges as a freaking mom. I didn't wear wedges. I didn't wear wedges when I was running around after these scallywags. Maybe on my birthday. I'd try. I'd try and unsuccessfully wear a pair of heels. And I had heels. But I used them as bookends because what mom wears wedges? Okay? So anyway, if the answers are all here, where are they? Are they here? they hear in their head I don't know what happened because like I say and as the conversation that I was listening to tonight pointed to and I agree with something in her stopped maturing around the age of 13 to 15 when her little video is where hey guys in those MLM videos that just made everything seem right and good and special and valuable and just everything you could ever want, you know? That was a 13 to 15 year old girl's vocabulary. I don't believe that she went to school much past that age. And I believe that something traumatic happened as I do agree with the conversation tonight. I believe that something so traumatic happened to her that when she went to her parents and her family, they didn't embrace her and tell her that everything was going to be okay and that they'd stand behind her. Rather, whatever happened to her would get fixed. They'd take care of it. And she wasn't to talk about it because whatever happened to her, even if it wasn't her fault, would bring shame upon the family. And to this date, there is nothing more important to her family than image. It's all about image. It's all about that image and that picture perfect life. Because if that image isn't right, it would bring shame. And what if shame was brought upon this girl's family? Hmm? What would happen? What would happen? What would happen? So whatever happened to her around that age, some think that maybe she got pregnant. And when she got pregnant around the age of 13 to 15, it wasn't a time period where that's more than um, acceptable. MTV highlights a, a show about it called Teen Mom. You know, she's not... She's not from that era where you send everybody off and you send them off to that nunnery and they go away for a little while to go and visit Aunt Jane and they come back with a little few extra pounds and, and they come back and they don't ever talk about being at Aunt Jane's. But sometimes when other people talk about why she was at Aunt Jane's, she cries and they know not to bring up Aunt Jane around her. But the truth was... Aunt Jane didn't exist, and it was a little house for pregnant women. And that house would find people who could take a baby. Maybe a nice couple who had always wanted a baby. Maybe a couple who would just take a baby that may not be one that other people wanted. Did that happen? 
Is that what happened? And then when she tried to come back, she was always reminded by that family not to talk about it because we're not going to bring shame to this family. Everything is picture perfect. Everything is picture perfect. Remember that. Keep your nails nice. Keep your makeup nice. Keep your hair nice. Wear shoes. Look like a lady. You need to be perfect. Okay? And don't, don't mess up. Don't mess up. Don't bring shame upon this family. No matter what happens, don't bring shame on this family. No matter what story you may say, no matter who sits in a room alone 23 hours a day, don't bring shame on this family. If you bring shame on this family, you'll be sorry. You'll be sorry. You'll be sued. You know what? You'll be sued. And, and, and while you're being sued, you'll get death threats because nothing is to mention anything against this picture-perfect family. Okay? But this picture-perfect family went here. Those girls were hers, right? Were they half his? Were they? Was only her? Only her? What about her? Which ones were his? That's a question too. Okay? So what happened? What happened when she came back from Aunt Jane's? If she was an Aunt Jane's. Because you see, one thing isn't true. She was not a nurse. She was never a nurse. Not even a CNA. There is no proof that she has ever had any health care certificate that requires state licensure whatsoever in any one of the states. If you can prove me differently, please do. So far, me and all of my armchair investigators sitting along this armchair detective couch with me have not been able to find one. And what they can't find either is they can't find her diploma. So what happened here? Hmm? Maybe after the visit to Aunt Jane's, she was never the same. What if she couldn't get over it? What if she wanted that baby? What if she wanted that baby? What if she was told she could have more babies? But nothing brought back the pain of the one baby that she had to let go. How hard would it have been to be that young? All of those girls that did that in that time period, they never got to say they wanted their baby. Why? Why was it a societal thing that you couldn't keep your baby because you were young? I do believe that Jesus' mother was only 14. I think that Mary, the sacred Mary, the Virgin Mary was 14. Pioneer women, by the time they were 25, they were old. It was not a shameful thing to have a baby when you were young until society said that it was. Society said that it was around the 50s and maybe her mom this one's mom that grew up in that era felt that shame when she was pregnant with her or her brother, maybe. And she didn't want that shame to be felt by her daughter. So she made sure that her daughter was not going to be in the same footsteps as she was. And maybe when this one tried to get it together and tried to get up in the morning, she couldn't. And maybe she couldn't stop crying and crying and crying because she missed that baby. And maybe she had postpartum depression. And here she is, 15, 16 years old with a raging case of postpartum depression because she misses that baby that she can't hold because somebody else told her she couldn't have it. And she wonders about that baby. She cries. Can't stop crying. So she confides in a teacher, in a male teacher, and a male teacher who understood and didn't judge her and didn't see anything wrong with her for what she went to Aunt Jane's for. And she could talk to that teacher 
when she felt different. How is she supposed to look at her classmates? Here they are talking about what kind of hairspray to buy and all of this. And she's missing her baby. She's missing her baby. And they're talking about having sex with their boyfriends and whatnot. But when she had sex, something was wrong. Either she chose to have sex with a boy and her mother didn't approve. Or the boy chose to have sex with her and she didn't consent. One of those two things may or may not have happened that led to all of this that led to that. Because something happened. Something happened. And when it happened, images were kept up. Oh, her mom made sure that everybody knew that she was just over there, you know. She was over there helping Aunt Jane, you know, Aunt, Aunt Jane, you know. She has those those back pains and she can't take care of the farm like that. But But her sweet girl, she's doing it. She's over there visiting and how nice of her to give up that, that summer and, and some of her school year even to do that. Yeah. Cause the image was okay. Cause it's all about images, right? To keep that picture perfect life, right? I don't know. Am I wrong? Is that what happened? Is that what the ongoing health issue was? Is that why that sticker has to go on? Because something in her always made that sh sure that she was not good enough. Like, she never felt good enough. Like, she had to lie about everything. A lie about being a nurse. Lie about going into a nursing program. Lie about starting a nursing program. She may have bought the book, like she said. But what for? She wasn't enrolled in college. She didn't even graduate high school now, did she? Or did she? Where's the diploma? Where's the picture of her graduation? Doesn't matter to me if she did or didn't. It matters to me that this shit's getting shoved down my throat. That this is a perfect mother with standards that me and all other stay-at-home moms must adhere to. Because this is what you look like when you're a stay-at-home mom, right? Are we back to the 50s where we put our hair in an updo and we iron the clothes before the husband gets home? Have our makeup perfect and touch up that lipstick right before he comes in so you can give him a kiss, hand him a beer, put him on his couch? Yeah, I don't think so. She didn't have those kids. Those kids were in daycare. So what kind of a stay-at-home mom puts the kids in daycare? The kids were in daycare from 7.30 a.m. till 5.30 p.m. At which time they would come home, have apparently a quick dinner, Benadryl, lots of Tylenol, and be put into a locked bedroom. This man felt so bad for those babies that occasionally he would go in and sneak them sandwiches because he felt bad for them being hungry and thirsty. Is that a man that to live... To deserves to live like this because if he felt so bad for those little girls being in bed hungry and thirsty that means that he had empathy and his hands on her her leaning into him that's a bond this is an empathetic father that had a great bond with these little girls that he got up in the morning he probably got these girls dressed he drove them to daycare. He worked all day. He was a good hard worker at his job. He'd get off of work. He'd go and pick up these two. He would help them to have a quick dinner, have a bath. She would play that nurse role that she says she's a nurse. She called herself Nurse Nene. She was no nurse. She had him take their rectal th rectal th temperatures with a rectal thermometer. Sorry, I have a hard time saying that in year 2022 because um, my kids um, 
I just use a thermometer, like a basic digital one, and put it underneath their armpit. Um, you can put it underneath your armpit and add one, and that makes a universal uh, reading. If you do rectal, it's usually one degree higher. Oral is the, the projected norm, just FYI. You don't need to be shoving anything up your kid's ass, just, just telling you. But anyway. No reason for those girls to be subjected to rectal thermometers nightly at all. Now, once they were in bed at 6.30, he washed their clothes, made sure to hang them up. From what we understand and from her video, she had him clean the house, um, the house wasn't allowed to get that dirty because the kids, again, were not at home. Um, from some of her videos where she tried to show that she could cook, um, it didn't flow right. So you could tell that there wasn't a lot of uh, organic uh, kitchen knowledge. And now we're going to get to the bottom of the, the, uh, the bottom of the, um, I don't want to, I don't know how to drop this here. He made all the money, folks. That's right. So he had the girls in daycare. He made all the money. What makes you think he couldn't get a divorce and get custody of these two? If he had the true bond with them. And he made all the money. just on that, without me even saying anything further. It's a possibility, isn't it? He knows that. There's no reason why he would have thought of anything differently. If he wanted her in the picture, he could have had her in the picture. And he could have had the girls that he has a bond with. He would not be the first father in the United States to get a divorce. He would not be the first father in the United States to get custody by showing that he did not approve of the rectal thermometer um, issue and that he was sneaking food into the girls' rooms and that he did not appreciate his wife chopping his daughter's hair off as punishment and that uh, he had the girl's best interest in heart and he could prove it. Any guardian at Lightham could have came into this situation and interviewed those girls and him, those girls and her, and made the decision. And I bet you that any guardian at Lightham would have wrote the testimony out that he is a good father that has a bond with them and is empathetic to their needs to the effect that he sneaks in sandwiches to them at night because he knows that they're still hungry and thirsty because this one believes that they should be in a locked bedroom for 12 hours at night. Now the comments will read, no doctor would allow that. No doctor would say that they should have Tylenol and Benadryl. So they're saying that, what? That because a doctor doesn't say you should do it, that it isn't done? Does anybody think that a doctor would be consulted on such actions? No. Now there is another, um, there's a parenting doctrine out there now that uh, she has referred to that she said told her this parenting method that's not proven there was no doctor involved in those decisions there was nothing there was no nurse involved in these decisions she is not a nurse she alone this one made up these rules to put these two in bed at 6.30 p.m. and have them woken up at 6.30 a.m. so they can go to daycare and be gone with him by 7.30. That puts her in the role of not caregiving at all. Well, a stay-at-home mother? Yes, by de definition. She's staying at home and she is a mother. That's it. That's it. Not in the way that you see. Start looking at what you see, people. Start looking at what's picture perfect and question it. I don't care if you look at something and somebody's telling you something else. Turn off the volume and look at what you see. 
what do you see here? You see a man, a father, who has her held in a way in which she's not going to fall. She starts to fall. Daddy's got her. She's got her little doll. If he's bringing food to them, that means he has empathy. He would require no empathy whatsoever to be able to do what this headline says he did to make him be here. They're saying this is a narcissist incapable of empathy. In fact, the very opposite of empathy no empathy exists in him. He's a monster. Does a monster bring sandwiches to his babies, even though she says not to? I don't know. But I don't think so. I can't guarantee it. Because I don't know what happened that day. I don't know. But did it all start when she started messing with the family image, when she started messing with what this picture perfect family represents, who cares about this picture? Who cares if it's perfect? Who does? She does. She does. Now she wants it to look perfect because she wants people to think she's making money, right? Because to her money is happiness. Money is success. And so... Even though we are here four years later, it seems that the family of hers is really concerned about money and they don't have a whole lot of it. But you know where they get their money? By saying everything here was picture perfect. And if people start saying that this wasn't picture perfect and that this man does not belong in that outfit... What happens to the money? Well, what happens to the image? What if that family doesn't have that perfect image so they're not getting the money they are anymore? Because they're getting a lot of money. They're getting fundraisers, all kinds of, you name it. They have lived off of this tragedy. They have lived off the image. But when did this, when did this start? Did it start in 2018 or did it start when she was about 13 to 15? When she learned it was so important to make it look right. So if she didn't graduate high school, what, did people, what, what would people have said? What did her mom say when she wasn't going to be able to wear that cap and gown? They sent her to Aunt Jane. Okay, they did everything right. She should have, <laughs> she should have graduated. They did everything right, right? But you know her, she just couldn't get it together. And you know what? She couldn't get it together. And maybe because her dad has talked about her strong legs and there's been other things about her strong legs and, and her, and there's been mentioned, got to count those knives around her because she can't be around knives. And I don't know. They say she can't be around shoelaces. I don't know if those have shoelaces or not. I don't know. They say that she doesn't even have a driver's license. But you saw her in the Lexus making a video. Right. But did you see her driving it? No. But she said it was hers. But it's in his name. But she won it from, not won it, but she earned it from selling stickers. But she didn't sell enough stickers to get that. And if she got that, it'd be in her name. And there's no documentation that she ever made a dollar selling these stickers. Now she bought these stickers. Okay. She bought those stickers. So if she bought all of those stickers and those stickers are in boxes all over the basement, all over the basement, then yes, you could go and you could turn it around and say, here is an earnings from this sticker company. 
But then you go, okay, how much did she put in? How many stickers did she buy and how many stickers did she sell? Because you buy the stickers and sell them for 75% of what you bought. So you profit maybe 25% after shipping and handling, right? And then they give you a car allowance out of that 75%. So you're either getting a check or you're getting a check that you're supposed to sit, spend on your car and insure it and pick from only a certain number of cars that you can have if you have these stickers on and, and say that you got that, right? So what if she never got that Lexus? Because she didn't. He got a Lexus. It's in his name. She got many traffic violations in that, but we don't know that she had a driver's license. She drove it, but was she supposed to? Was she on the insurance? What happened to her driver's license? Did she ever have one? Did it get taken away? Oh, you go into the criminal the criminal background of this one. This one's wild. This one should be wearing that outfit based on what we see with the criminal background check. Oh, yeah. And it's not in Colorado. No, no, no. That's not where she's from. you got to go wide. you got to go far and wide on this one. Okay? So, silly girl didn't earn a Lexus. She didn't earn shit from that MLM. She didn't earn shit from selling those stickers. She just had a little case of toxic positivity. Because that's what's really contagious in those MLMs. It's called toxic positivity toxic positivity and I don't know that there's a um, cure for it but it involves lying a lot of lying she had no downline she didn't have a team she got regularly boosted off of Facebook and out of Facebook groups for repeatedly trying to harass people to sell stickers with her lost many friendships the trips aren't even proven. One of these MLM uh, Huns has came forward and said, as I have heard on several discussion boards, that the MLMs will encourage you that if you are on vacation somewhere to take pictures and say that you're on vacation from the sticker company, that the sticker company sent you on this vacation. That it's a perk of it. Sell that toxic positivity. Because with that toxic positivity, you get the picture perfect family. And if you have something that's picture perfect, and you have a bad case of toxic positivity, it's contagious. And when you spread that toxic positivity on others, they want this picture perfect life. And then... They'll buy your stickers and your image is right. So with that, let's try, let's call this, let's call this picture perfect chapter one. Should we do a chapter thing here? Yeah, that's the ticket. Let's do picture perfect chapter one. Thanks for listening everybody. Have a nice night.